Oh yeah, this is an instant reaction, all right, to this game two tonight. And I've had it. I've had it. This team, have you watched the last few minutes of this Celtic Heat game? And if you're a Celtic fan, how is this defensible? These guys, whether it's Marcus Smart, literally a ball in his hands, Butterfingers, he just drops it, lets it go as if a top potato. That next to the last possession where Tatum was like fumbling, bumbling, stumbling, and then Marcus Smart tried to get it back to Tatum before he got called for an offensive foul. Has this team ever played basketball before? They might as well have me out there playing, playing in this game. And to think that they blew lead after lead after lead that had that, as you heard, 96-87, six minutes ago. And I understand it's not a big lead in the NBA, 100%. But you would think somehow, some way, that they would find a way to close this Miami Heat team, which you got to give it up. They are feisty. They've got gut. They've got everything you could ever imagine and you could hope for in a team which is nothing that the Celtics have. And I don't want to hear any excuses that, oh, we weren't ready. We weren't. They played the team two of the last three years in the conference final. And of course, this being the three of the last four years. So to take the 30,000 foot view on this game before I even move on to the rest of the series, Joe Mazzulla, I don't know what he's thinking with Grant Williams. I understand he scored a couple of baskets after that three where he hit it over Jimmy Butler and not for nothing, Grant Williams, you need to pipe down. You've barely played in this postseason. Yes, you gave the team a spark. And I understand you're trying to get the crowd riled, etc. But stop poking the bear there. And I'm not trying to make Jimmy Butler out to be Michael Jordan. But we all know that Jimmy Butler, the guy's relentless. The guy is just not going to stop. And Grant Williams is, uh, is far from Michael Cooper, his days in the L.A. Lakers. Look that up. So for Missoula not to take this man out, after Jimmy Butler's undressing him, possession after possession, backing him down the paint and scoring on him with a too small gesture. And for Missoula to not take him out there, I understand Jason Tatum did nothing in this fourth quarter as far as, what did he take, two shots and Jalen Brown? To me, credit the Miami Heat defense, despite the fact that, yes, you would think your best offensive players, they're going to make an impact or at least try to do what they can to break double teams or even defer for that matter. But when you only have those two guys, you're not going to rely on Al Horford there. Marcus Smart, again, Mr. Butterfingers. And this is what you have, a disaster. And Malcolm Brogdon was already pulled for Marcus Smart. So in that scenario, Brogdon isn't going to come in there to make any type of contribution. And what you have here is an 0-2 deficit going to Miami. And I will say this, Miami is not a great home court, as we all know. All those celebrities go down there, even the DJ college of the world. He can put his $60,000 Jordans on two pillows while he's texting on his phone. He doesn't know a free throw from a half-court shot. And that's just typical Miami, the people leaving the building in game six with the whole Ray Allen shot, as we recall. But on top of all that, this Miami team, they are a buzzsaw. I mean, think about it. And they're doing it with, let's face it, nobodies other than Butler and Adebayo. Max Struess, Dave Vincent, Caleb Martin. I know Kyle Lowry's 100 years old, but we know he has a championship pedigree. But we all know the heat culture, Spolstra, etc. But this is just inexcusable. And it's indefensible how this Celtic team plays down the stretch. They do not know how to play clutch winning basketball. They either blow people out or when the game is close, they don't know how to finish. And this is why you can't trust the team. I can't even say the, the coaches, it's partially the coach's fault, but when Tatum is literally just flailing on the court because he doesn't know left from right, Marcus Smart, I mean, what was he doing? He can't even handle a suitcase. Uh, and watch, the Celtics are going to win the two games in Miami. I would not be surprised. And I thought tonight, not to say it was going to be a cakewalk game by any stretch, but I would think that this would have been a game where once they had a 96-89 lead, or was it 96-87, that, yeah, it would have been nip and tuck, but they would have been eventually prevailed at the end. Well, of course not. No, never them. Because, again, they don't know how to take care of the ball. They're careless as can be. They can't even execute. Who knows what plays they run. Everything is a three-point shot. When they go to the basket because of the zone or whatever defense, uh, forget about it. They're trying to Euro step. They're trying to do this. They're trying to moonwalk. They can't even do anything. This is just an epic disaster. And... I don't even know what to say. Could this team get swept? Would I be shocked at this point? Absolutely not. But all I'm going to say is this in closing, because it's approaching a five-minute mark. Sunday night, I'm going to be there. But boy, these next 48 hours is going to be brutal. And this is the only way to get this off my chest, because 
this is just the ugliest basketball this team has played. And give it up to the Heat. I get it. But still, just an abomination on so many fronts when it comes to watching the Celtic team, especially over these first two games, being unable to close out this team. And again, this isn't the LeBron James, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade-led team, which obviously if they scored all these points, you could say, okay, I understand. This isn't an offensive juggernaut we're talking about here. But anyway, I'll shut up.